It's time for JUCO Jam, presented to you by Dream Big Athletics, hosted by Tad Slowick, an exciting new podcast bringing you all the great action from JUCO baseball. Here you'll find weekly updates from around the country, highlighting the teams, players, and coaches who impact the game at the junior college level. Everything you want to learn about JUCO baseball can be found here and on our website at dreambigathletics.com. There you'll find our weekly team rankings, the top player rankings headed into the spring, and all the news of what is happening in the game at the junior college level. On this show, you will have many guests, coaches, players who will give us insight on the day-to-day, behind-the-scenes working of junior college baseball. And now our host, Tad Slowick. Welcome, baseball fans, to the JUCO Jam. I am your host, Tad Sloak, and we are jamming here today again with our friend, Lou Temple. How are you doing today, Lou? Hey, Tad. It's good to be back, for sure. Good to be back. I'm uh, I'm excited about the season has opened. How about that? Yeah, it was great to watch baseball. It's January, and we're watching baseball. I love it. Appreciate you being on here. I know you've been busy with auditions and everything. So like the beginning of every new year for, for everyone, there's, there's new beginnings. You know, that's what uh, the beginning means. So I'm out uh, auditioning for uh, new television shows, new films, and projects that are um, excited to get built and hopefully I can be part of those and uh, it's just part of the process going out um, uh, a lot of the people that are in charge of casting are um, people of course that I know so that's not new but the projects all are and so there's a preparation process that occurs Uh, I just shot something um, this past week here in California and so that's a good start. You know, um, I think we were talking before about the idea, well, I haven't had as many auditions as I would like, uh, but I've had more jobs. Yeah, so um, maybe... Getting the jobs are the important thing. Yeah, maybe less, audi- <laughs> less auditions, more jobs is the, the end result and a better place to be. So yeah, man, I'm doing good. And uh, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing great. So you're off to a good start. Baseball and junior college levels off to a good start, and we're ready to get cracked. Ready to rock. So. Well, let's talk about this good start and what happened this past uh, weekend, opening weekend. Uh, some huge, huge news uh, with Southern Nevada. Now, got to say, tip my cap to you. You you've had Southern Nevada in your honorable mentions on your rankings. And you did re- talk about them the other day that they could they could bust into the twenty five and um, and I think that's pretty appropriate. Yeah, I think I think they're gonna definitely bust into twenty five after the weekend they had. You know, they went four and zero this weekend with two wins over defending national champ and number one ranked Central Arizona. Two impressive wins, and then they beat another good club. Uh, Arizona Western. So you know, where, they really, where were they playing? They were in that Vegas they, tournament. They, yeah? They were in, yeah, they were up in uh, Vegas area. So and and Tab uh, just got to ask because uh, for those of you who have listened, uh, we're hoping that you do. If you have not, uh, check out um, Central Arizona's coach Anthony Gillich uh, in his conversation with Tad, defending champions. Um, yeah. Getting well, for South, yeah, Southern Nevada really had some guys swing it pretty good, though, no matter what they were swinging. Uh, Jackson Castillo had three homers and, wow. and 10 RBIs. And, you know, Hunter Cashy uh, hit himself a homer and had three RBIs. And Jack Hale had a homer and six RBIs. So they, they swung the bats pretty good against uh, the two pretty good opponents. So it was a good start you? for them. Does that surprise you at all, Tad? These guys no, no, doesn't surprise me at all. They're, you know, I mean, Southern Nevada's had a good program over the years, and uh, you know, they just came out of the gate real strong here, and uh, I guess we're going to hear from them quite a bit this spring. So. I'm excited for Southern Nevada, and that's the great thing about junior college baseball is that uh, anyone can come out and and play tough and be a contender, and and I love that, and uh, and everyone's playing head to head at the at the height of competition right from the get-go there's no more padding schedules there's no more playing snowbirds you know like we used right. to no, this is- no uh no jumping around i mean they're they're going head to head with a great competition and then in the second yeah following up tad sorry to interrupt but following up with southern nevada's great weekend 
South Mountain does the same thing, and you have them right at the at the bottom of your list, and the, and they're already climbing the ladder to tell to tell you they're they're better than twenty five. What's going on? Yeah, South Mountain. We knew they had the pitching, but they they really came out of the gate strong against number ten Salt Lake. They swept them in a four game series. South Mountain went four and over Salt Lake, which is a great program, and uh, you know they must have come out of the you know really really strong here. Uh, you know guys like Core Jackson, Sam Christensen, and you know Carson Waslepski uh, all had five hits to get their offense going. You know, they got home runs from uh, Carter Ritchie and, you know, Kyle Alexander. So they swung the bats real good. And then, you know, Jackson Jelkin, you know, one of their top pitchers, you know, had pitched five innings, no runs, six strikeouts. And uh, Jacob Beltran also threw five shutout innings with four strikeouts also. So they had not only the offense going, but they had the pitching on the mound going. So that's what it took to beat Salt Lake. And, they did the job four they, four straight. That's great. They that's that's crazy for a sweep. And Tad, we'll talk about this later. But in your opinion, and your eyeball test, are the bats a little ahead of the pitching at this juncture, or or is this just good baseball? It, it just it's just good baseball. It's just the uh, the players who are supposed to hit, I guess, are hitting, and the pitchers are supposed to pitch are pitching. You know, yeah. I mean, there's going to be you know, the old knock off the rust effect on some of this, you know, you can't uh, read everything into it. This doesn't make a season the opening weekend, but you know, it's better to get off to a good start than a slow start. Right. So, well, you're always um, catching up. If you get, uh, you get behind, you get swept, but uh, I have a feeling that uh, Salt Lake will uh, rebound and find their stride. I uh, think they definitely will. Getting back. Uh, now this is no surprise. State Walters Walter. state gets off to a good start. Three and yeah, three and oh versus, uh, you know, USC Salkahatchee and these guys <laughs> talk about having the bats going. They scored 56 runs in three games. They went three and oh, uh, Cruz Newman had a couple of home runs. You know, he was five for nine, eight RBIs, you know, Keaton Ray, was six for seven. He had two homers, eleven RBIs. They they had pretty good pitching too. Landon Slemp uh, threw three innings and punched out seven. And uh, you know, this had uh, Bradley Gagan also had four Ks and two innings pitched. Uh, so they got off to a good start, uh, both with the bat, especially with the bats. Wow, and, you know, that's football scoring. Well, too. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's football scoring. Uh, well, uh, good on on them, and then. Uh, in your rankings at 23, uh, Midland shows up, does very well, 3-0 and start. Yeah, Midland. And, and then they played a tough opponent, too. Alvin's a good good program, yeah. a good team. And, uh, you know, Midland was uh, trying to make a statement here a little bit early. Uh, you know, just played three good, solid games to beat a good opponent. Uh, uh, Jake Martinez had five RBIs for them. And then their big, strong six, seven right-hander Michael Lindsay had six strikeouts and in four innings pitched, and uh, you know Tyler Boudreau had the same six strikeouts and in four innings pitched. You know, so they're, they're missing bats, and it's a good thing as a pitcher to miss some bats. So, so Alvin, uh, just curiously, uh, you used to talked about them having a good program. Do they have any pitching? And I'm where I'm trying to go yeah, with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alvin, Alvin's got the you know Kyler Mensel. You know, I mean, oh, that's a, right. One we of the talked top, about top him. players. Yeah. So maybe One another pitchers in Juco baseball, another Alvin Express coming down yeah. the pike. Let's <laughs> let's hope. Uh, uh, I'm sure he hopes right. for Pima. Yeah. Now Pima got off to a great start, uh, and that doesn't surprise you, I don't think. No, uh, the, they have the pitching. You know, one thing they do have is pitching. They went four and over as Paradise Valley, and uh, you know, I was talking earlier on my on our rankings thing about how Jefferson County had all these great left-handed pitchers and. You know, Pima stacks up real well with them also. Uh, you know, left-handers pitches. Uh, Anthony Imhoff had seven Ks in four innings, and so did uh, Matt Cornelius, uh, seven punch-outs in four innings, you know. So they were dealing. You know, that's a big reason, you know, Pima went 4-0 and over the weekend. And they have depth on the, in pitching there. Jaden Swanberg, you know, Wyatt Hardy, Alessandro Castro. I mean, 
you know, they're, they're going to be dangerous if, if they can pitch like this all year. So, uh, it's, it's going to be, uh, yeah, they're going to be a force to be reckoned with out there in Arizona and Arizona. We talked about it all the time has such a yeah good quality of, of, of teams out there. Yeah. Like you, like you and coach Gillich were talking, uh, any given weekend, uh, there's, there's, you're, you're being asked to stand up to the test. It's a, it's a, good competition every weekend yeah definitely i mean every no, no no doubt about it all right following up now uh our old friends over at san jacinto uh come out of the gate at two and one pretty good uh they show they're they're you know they're going to compete for sure yeah i mean they, they came in they, they played a tough opponent they played uh you know number 22 uh, new mexico um, who's got a real strong program this year, and you're going to hear more from New Mexico in a positive way. But uh, New Mexico took the first game, and then San Jack came back and took the last two of the weekend. And then, uh, you know, they were led by their their thumper, Jake Bennett. You know, he had a couple home runs with three RBIs. Uh, another good player, their outfielder, Trey Rucker, had a home run with four RBIs. And Armani Sanchez, who I really like, who I think is really matured as a player and is really hopefully going to have a great year for them. It won seven for 13, you know, had four RBIs. He had three stolen bases, played great defense. And then uh, a good hitting uh, professional hitter type guy, uh, Luke Nail, had six hits and uh, three RBIs for them also. On the mound, uh, Titan Hayes was just, uh, I guess, really, really bringing it this weekend. Uh, You know, he was 93 to 97, had four strikeouts, and, you know, out of the five hitters he faced, I mean, it just was a dominant performance, and he came out of the gate real strong, as did Lex Garcia, who had eight strikeouts in five innings, and Cale Lansville also had five Ks in three innings pitch. So, you know, the guys came out with good stuff, and, uh, you know, they're off and running. So the Texas JCs, in your mind, uh, do they have it similar to Arizona, where they're they're lining up each weekend, pretty pretty tough? Yeah, yeah. It's there's not there's there's not too many easy weekends uh, down in Texas, Arizona, Florida. I mean, you know, you're not gonna get too many easy easy games. Yeah, that's for again, sure. in junior college baseball, any given day, uh, somebody can shut you down, and uh, or or just open it up and score a bunch of runs. So it's it's it, right. uh, it's a grind. It's it's really good baseball. So following up at number three, we have McLennan, another Texas junior college team. Yeah, McLennan had a tough, t- a tall task, you know, uh, against Navarro. Navarro is always a tough team, great yeah. program. Uh, they have great tradition over there. And, you know, I have to play them out of the gate. was an easy thing. Navarro took game one, and then uh, McLennan came back and took uh, two games after that to go two and one for the weekend. Uh, you know, they were led by Tyler Johnson. I mean, he's their, their, their yeah, player to, to, you know, to get there and see all the players, all the at-bats, all the things you want to see, you know, and I'll be honest with you. I'm sure I, I miss some decent performances by other players that, uh, you know, uh, just couldn't get over and see all the time. And well, you're only one guy and... up at, to, yeah. at this point. So we'll, uh, right. we'll cut you some slack that way. And you, you only... were able to see central Florida, however, and they played very well this weekend. Yeah. Number four ranked team in the country. Uh, and these guys are strong. I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. They re- recruiting or a strength program, but these guys, you know, are, put together i mean a lot of them look wow. like big leaguers already in their uniform i mean these guys are strong guys you know who really take their craft seriously and you know obviously that's why they're one of the top teams in the country uh you know they had good weekends from kane and george had a couple of home runs carson bain had a home run um you know and i i don't even think they're hitting stride obviously it's the first weekend and i think some of their better hitters uh you know are, are still getting going and you know, if these guys get it all going offensively, I mean, they're going to be pretty scary because they could really throw some good arms at you. And the guy who catches those good arms, you know, who I thought did a great job this weekend was Michael Gilliam's catcher. Uh, really could catch and throw. Good, strong, solid kid. You know, he's got a good approach at the plate, and I think he'll have a really good year for them. I, I really like the way he handled himself behind the plate and handled the pitching staff. But How do you swing uh, the bat? 
Swing to bat pretty good. Like nice. I said, he's got a good approach. Okay. And, you know, and uh, you know he's gonna he's gonna have a good season at the plate too, as well as uh, defensively. So, so I think he's a good all around player. They had some pretty good pitching though. This is this is where they oh. really dominated. I think on the weekend is, uh, you know, they had Brian Holiday, who's one of the top JUCO pitchers in the country. You know, he was up to ninety three with a, just a nasty hammer. I mean, that curveball is just uh, totally unhittable at times and you know, really dealt and had command of the game and really, really did a great job out there. He had six strikeouts in four innings. Uh, you know, newcomer, uh, freshman, uh, Keller Everly, you know, six, six right-handed pitcher, you know, he was up to 93 and he had a nasty split. Wow. Uh, I mean, he had a nasty splitter that was just bottoming out and hitters had a hard time picking it up. Uh, you know, the five outs he got were all strikeouts. He had five strikeouts in, in an inning and two thirds. And, you know, he's he's going to have dominant stuff. He's a, he's a really good looking freshman. Uh, another kid, he's six eight, is uh, Emmanuel Dooley. I mean, he's he was up to ninety three. Also, really loose and easy. Uh, good athletic. You know, gets it for his guy six eight. You know, he gets his stuff together real good and. You know, he had a sharp downer curveball going, too, uh, as well as a good fastball. Four strikeouts in two innings also. And, you know, just had had good stuff and then had just had command of the game. Uh, another guy for them, James Hill, is he's a 90-91 guy. But, you know, he has a sharp downer breaking ball. He had six strikeouts in four innings and really, uh, really dominated. And then, uh, you know, lefty, uh, they had uh, Andrew Herman who threw real well. He's 88-89 with a sharp breaking ball, who had seven strikeouts also in four innings and, you know, really did a good job uh, giving them opportunity to win their game and stuff. But, you know, these guys got some some great arms to throw at them, at you, and, you know, they're going to be pretty tough. If they get those bats going like I, I know they're capable of, uh, this can be a really good ball club. All the mechanics on these this pitching staff are pretty tight. They have a decent. Uh, yeah, I, I'll tell you what. They hardly walk anybody. I mean, they very rarely walk people. I mean, so it's, good it's, to hear. You know, with yeah, I mean, like that and throwing strikes. I mean, it's it's uh, that's that is the game. You know, right? They're doing a great job with their pitchers. The guys are working with them, and you know, I mean, they just uh, you know are really going to have been effective. You know, just pounding the strike zone and. You know, not letting up those freebies to, for people to get on base against. For sure. Well, sticking with um, Florida, and uh, you had a chance to see Chipola at number eight. This was the the oxymoron of Central Florida. Central Florida came out and really pitched well, and uh, Chipola really came out and hit well. Uh, they were led by John Pierre Ortiz, who just had an awesome weekend, nine for 15, a home run, five RBIs. And he was also up to 94 on the hill, too. So He was. He um, should quit yeah. now. Just yeah. Shut him I mean, down and wait for the draft. Right, right, exactly. I mean, he's a good-looking kid. You know, I, you know, I'm back in Pro Bowl. I'm drafting this kid. He's a he's good-looking player. A yeah, good kid, too. Um, you know, and then Eli Birch behind the plate had a great weekend. You know, he's 5 for 13. He had a home run, five RBIs. And this guy can catch and throw, too. You know, he's a lot like Gilliams, just a strong, solid guy back there, athletic, uh, who can catch and throw and uh, really did a, a nice job for them. On the mound, uh, Dylan Haynes, lefty, just uh, dealt, I mean, 12 punch outs in five innings, just had total command of his stuff and, and the game and uh, really shut these teams down. Uh, Brogan Napier, you know, another guy who was 90, 92, good break and stuff. And then uh, Thresher Steed came in to close one of the games. You know, he's up to 92 with a good breaking ball. And then their, their, their mighty might, their hard thrower, Drew Howard, uh, really, you know, came in and brought it, you know, six six strikeouts and two innings, basically struck out everybody. Wow. He, he, he got out, so. Uh, so it was a, a, a dominant performance. And, and I'm really interested because I watched your videos that you posted, and of course we appreciate those. And if you haven't seen these, uh, go to Tad's Twitter account. You will be able to see a lot of uh, the players that he's he's speaking of and in action in the moment. Um, the only downside to the uh, the weekend was the chain link fences still at Auburn Hill. <laughs> They were a little hard to film through, you know. Most stadiums now have those nice nettings where it was it's easier to yeah. to do, but uh, the chain link fence uh, could be challenging at times. So, 
Well, we'll have to figure out how to technically get through that. And n- no surprise, some really good athletes on number 16, Florida Southwestern. Right. And they went two and two on the weekend, but they lost to uh, number four, Central Florida, and number eight, Chipola, in good ball games. I mean, so yeah. this team team's got a lot of talent. Uh, you know, if they hit stride, I really think that they're going to be a force to be reckoned with in Florida. I mean, and Florida's always tough uh, competition. You know, they have to play Miami Day down there, uh, Indian River, and those schools. But uh, you know, there it's it. This is, team is going to be as good as anybody. You know, when they when they hit stride here, uh, you know, guy Marty Gare threw for them, uh, mid nineties guy threw real well, five punch outs and. Uh, in three innings. And, you know, I was really impressed by him with his mechanics. You know, I'd heard that people had said in the past that he had trouble throwing strikes, but, you know, he repeated his delivery real well and and threw the ball real well. He's got a real good uh, sharp breaking ball too, to go with it. And, uh, you know, he's just a good looking prospect, you know, mid nineties guy with uh, good stuff. Next guy is uh, Tyler Kennedy. You know, he's a big, strong kid. I think you saw him on the film down there, you know, 92 to 95 with a sharp, down or breaking ball again, a good athlete who's able to repeat his delivery is going to do a good job. Uh, Kellen Hoover uh, was 89 91 with a sharp breaking ball. I, I think he's thrown better in the past. You know, he's just a little slow out of the gate this time, but you know, Hoover is going to be a guy that's going to, you're going to hear his name quite a bit uh, uh, throughout the season. You know, Adam Dollar, a left handed pitcher, had a couple punch outs in an inning pitched and then, uh, you know, Haney Hardy uh, struck out struck out all the guys he faced. Had struck out the side in the one inning pitch, so he was pretty pretty solid. Uh, the guys I liked uh, at the plate, you know, Anthony Westbrook behind the plate. You know, another one of those strong catch and throw catchers, uh, left handed hitter who could swing the bat. You know, had a couple nice hits, a home run. Um, you know, Joel Gardner and, and Sergio Rivera also swung the bat real good for them this weekend. You know, they got a couple guys who got off this little start. You know, Derek Williams, Ari Samak, uh, those guys are really good players, good hitters who are going to really, really come on for them as the season goes on. So they should be uh, definitely in, in good shape. Uh, you know, like you said, this is a, a very talented team and you know, look out if they hit stride. Gavin Adams was probably the best pitcher I saw this weekend. Okay. I mean, he was uh, 95 to 98. Uh, fastball just came easy out of his hand. Explosive, uh, you know, 84, 86 slider. He's uh, going to Florida State. And, uh, you know, he's uh, he had seven punch outs and three innings pitch, but just, you know, dominant stuff and uh, just everything you want to see in a pitcher. Uh, you know, Florida State's a great opportunity for him to go, but uh, if I'm a pro guy, man, I'm really looking hard at this guy. I mean, you know, up in the draft, too. I mean, he's a good-looking kid. Nice. Uh, Indian River, he's from Indian what, River. Indian yeah, River where, also. Where, where does he pitch? I'm sorry? He's at Indian River. Indian River, yeah. Always. And Indian River also had a couple other good pitchers thrown out there. George De Cardenas, you know, he was 90-91 with a pretty good slider and a plus change. Uh, Angelo Smith also, uh, was really good. You know, he pitched in relief for, for four innings was dominant, you know, 90, 91 with a sharp breaking ball. You know, he ended up, uh, having, uh, four K's and no walks and really, really did a good job for the four innings. He was in there. The Santa Fe got off to a good start too. I think they're in our honorable mention there, uh, in uh, the rankings. I mean, they went three and oh. One guy I really like, very impressed with was uh, Jelani Rogers. I mean, he's center fielder, athlete, you know, can run him down real well, can play center field at the next level. And, uh, you know, he had a couple home runs and four RBIs. Strong kid, strong athletic, you know, everything you're looking for, uh, you know, a pro type guy. Um, you know, also they had JP Hairholes, uh, you know. Uh, he went six for ten with a homer and seven RBIs for Santa Fe. So they had a good weekend too out of the gate. You know, like I said, being led there by a pretty good athlete, Jelani Rogers. So and, you know, I love the fact these kids all played hard. You know, every yeah. team I watched, you know, these kids are just excited to be out playing baseball again. You know, having the game start. You know, not practice anymore. Yeah, they got the games. It's for real, and you know the the intensity, the passion they go about and. You know, it's just amazing how well prepared these kids are too, physically, and you know their coaches do a great job of uh, 
getting them ready for the ball game. So, you know, first day out, you know, it doesn't make or break a season, but you know, like we talked about earlier, it's good to get off to a good start. And if you didn't, then, you know, that's baseball and you got to, you know, write the ship and, and get it going for the next weekend. Because from now on, there's going to be baseball, baseball, baseball. So all of nonstop. It. All of it. Did you get any good food while you were in Florida, Tad? Uh, not, not particularly. I mean, it, the ballpark had, had your hot dogs and the, <laughs> you know, hamburgers venue, you know, so, you know, you go gotcha. pick on that stuff and there's no really good way to eat anything, you know, when you're doing these tournaments and games because you're just nonstop ball games and, you know, you're lucky to hit the, the Wendy's or the McDonald's or something you know, on your way back to the hotel and just hit the, hit the bed because you're exhausted, you're exhausted from the good weather and, uh, you know, just being out at the ballpark. So it was a great uh, venue down there in Auburndale. And then were there you know, some, we'll uh, did some parents travel and come to see their, Oh their- yeah. Yeah. Parents are great. You know, parents really, you know, support these teams and, you know, I mean, you know, any, any successful people, you know, you're going to see, uh, good parents behind them, good upbringing. So, you know, the parents are there and it was a, it was a great atmosphere for baseball. Right. Mean. Well, that's important to me because it's important to get you off on the good start. And so, uh, that trip, uh, gave you good weather. It gave you great baseball and, uh, um, right. and your, your travels are safe and sound. And, and that brings us to this coming weekend. It's only Monday, but, uh, Friday will be here soon. Where are you off to? Oh, we got that big, tournament in panama city i mean that's going to be a monster i mean talk about good clubs we got mclennan and uh and uh san jack coming over from texas you got the the really good wall stothan and other good schools from alabama coming down uh you got those good schools in florida playing there chipola northwest florida state college of florida um and and some of the things I forgot to mention, speaking of the State College of Florida, I forgot to mention this, this uh, Michael Ferret, who's one of our top pitchers in, on our list in Juco baseball, he threw a no-hitter against Northwest Florida his first game out. Seven-inning no-hitter uh, shutout and, you know, really, really threw well, I heard. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing him and, you know, some of the other players. Uh, another guy, too, uh, from Spartanburg Methodist, uh, I forgot to mention, too, is, uh, you know, Trip Brown, uh, he's a he's a Tennessee commit, and he had nine strikeouts in five innings. So he, you know, he had a pretty dominant up. performance. Yeah, his first time out. So I think it was four or five innings anyway, but is still dominant. So anyway, getting back to the tournament, um, you know, we, like I said, good good team. Wabash Valley's coming down from Illinois. You know. Uh, Gulf Coast will be there, you know, just so so many good teams and, mm-hmm. you know, a, a lot of ranked teams. There's got to be about 10 ranked teams coming there. So, gotcha. And, and, the team, teams, and teams about to be ranked. The <laughs> teams that are coming out of the Midwest up in your area going down to to connect with some of the Florida teams, uh, they'll, they'll be ready. They'll be tuned up and primed. Yeah, I mean Wabash Valley, they're a team that they they they're plenty of power, a great program. They'll be ready, you know. I mean, they have I obviously have a little slight disadvantage, but believe it or not, down down state Illinois when you get outside Chicago, sometimes a little better weather, you know, not much better, but a little better weather. So, hopefully they, you know, we had a chance to, you know, get out at some time and you know, throw the ball around and stuff, you know, because the, the big thing I think is getting outside is just seeing that ball off the bat. That's kind of a different than taking grounders in the gym or the field house or wherever you're at. So yeah, it's a, it a just different. opens up the whole world. And sometimes um, the, the game gets away from you, you know, it gets a little faster than what you want. It's hard to slow the game down because you're so excited and and the interesting, sometimes your first day on a, on a film, you're really excited and you want to make a good impression and you're a little jacked up with adrenaline to go start your role in the character. And you can be a little what I call big or over the top in your acting. And occasionally a director will ask you to bring it down, which uh, I can remember doing the Devil's Rejects for Rob Zombie. And it felt like, oh, yeah. Uh, this is the first day out of the gym. I'm so excited. Right, 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 exactly. And, and well, they're going to bring some good pitching down, though, for sure. So, uh, I mean, Jackson Sousey, you know, the number yeah. three ranked guy on our list. And, uh, 
you know, they got uh, Langevin, you know, Butcher, uh, Miranda, uh, you know, just some some good quality pitch and Jacob Frost, you know. So it's uh they'll they'll bring they'll bring a good team and they'll be ready to go. Trust me. So. Well, I know they'll be ready to go, and you'll be ready to go. When do you leave? Tom? Absolutely. Yeah, just uh, getting out of here on Thursday, and then uh, games start Friday morning, bright and early, you know, running around. So it, it's going to be great baseball. I'm really, really fired up and looking forward to it, and we'll have uh, all that information for everybody here on the jam uh, come next Monday, Tuesday. So, you know, again, for anything Juco, you want to find out, uh, I'm going to have, uh, these, uh, weekly hits up also, you know, some of the highlights of the week up on the website at dreambigathletics.com. So we're excited. And your Twitter Lou, one more time yeah. for us, Tad, can you just do your Twitter real quick for us? Yeah. Tad Slowick underscore DBA. DBA. Green so, Big Athletics. DBA. That's I mean, right, Dream Big Athletics. So. Woo, fishing's fine. Gotta, uh, go, to, go to the DBA Juco lead. Find out all the info. So, man, it's great to have you again here, Lou. And yeah, uh, great you could join us. And, you know, we'll, we'll keep Baseball doing season. this. Let's keep You've going. been listening to Juco Jam. For all your junior college needs, go to dreambigathletics.com. And make sure to tune in to next week's episode of Juco Jam.